What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Guys, we are starting off today's episode here at Spawn Town. That's right. I think it's time that we take down this pillar. Mm -hmm. The Diamond Wars are over, and I've seen that other pillars have started to come down. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling like it's that time that we need to take our pillar down. You know, I've been placing diamonds on this thing. Little bits here, little bits there at a time. I have no idea how many diamonds are are even in this tower, but I would like to find out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think we're just gonna come up here and diggy, diggy the diamonds away. I'm probably gonna take down this portal too and all these uh, random glass panes. Mm -hmm. And then there, we have this uh, this diamond block bullet thing that destroyed our tower. I don't even know whose diamonds those are or who they belong to, but they were kind of left here, so I think uh, I think they might be mine now. <laughs> if somebody wants them, they can come and claim them. <laughs> but I do know uh, the diamond bearded block bros. What? Wh how? I think that's how they say their name. I think they moved that bullet over here, and I, I'm not even sure if that was their diamonds or not. But uh, yeah, I think finders keepers at this point, huh? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and continue uh, digging this all down, and we'll be back. All right, that took a little bit of time, but I got the portal down, I got the fires put out, all the little random glass panes that were scattered all about, and of course, our diamond tower has all come down. It is now all existing inside the shulker, and that is what we ended up with. So nearly four stacks of diamonds is how many was there, how many uh, diamond ores, I guess I should say. And then we got a whole bunch of these other random bits and pieces. I'm not sure anybody else wants this stuff back, so I'm just gonna hold on to it. If they want it back, they can ask me for it. Uh, but while we are here in the spawn town, let's head over and check our shop. The old honey pot panda bear. What do we got going on in here? All right, so we've had no more bee nests sold. Oh my goodness, honey blocks are selling. All right, so we got 16 diamonds there, no honey bottles. That's kind of expected. I wasn't really thinking this was gonna be something that everybody would want. Ooh, okay, so we got some more diamonds here. We're up to 30 now. That's pretty good, I'm gonna have to restock. Uh, combs, nobody's bought the honeycomb blocks, and no more beehives have sold. Okay, well that's not bad. Nearly half a stack of diamonds from our shop. Yeah, this is uh, coming along pretty well. I still need to go through and get these candles stocked. We now have string from our mob farm. Um, well, actually, let's head over to the mob farm real quick. All right, guys, here we are back at the mob farm. You can see it is working wonderfully. We just <laughs> showed up and all these mobs are just spawned in there and getting flushed down. So on a live stream recently, I went and I added a storage so we could actually collect the drops. This is not... This is not the permanent storage. This is a temporary item sorting storage thing so I could collect gunpowder and other such things from the mob farm. The way this is working, pretty pretty simple. We just have the drops dropping down out of here like we did before. They're landing on the ground previously. Uh, they're just dropping down into this water stream, getting flushed along over here up into a bubble column. Yeah, and then it goes into... Uh, let's see, it slams into these three sea pickles here to align them between the ice and the hoppers so the items just kind of like ride a thin line right here so the hoppers can pick them up but they still slide along with the ice anyway so that comes all the way down here if for some reason the hopper doesn't pick up the items they will continue to the end fall down this little trench continue on and then re-enter the bubble column to get sorted once again so we just have an infinite loop here with the items just constantly flowing through if they don't get picked up the first time but uh check it out we have gunpowder coming in gunpowder gunpowder uh this top row of chests i kind of screwed up and i can't open these mm -hmm. uh we'll we'll fix this later <laughs> again this is temporary this isn't meant to be the uh the full thing so yeah uh bones gunpowder string rotten flesh all of these are full below them by the way arrows this is probably something i'm not sure if we need like mass quantities of, I think Cub actually has been using a whole lot of arrows recently, but I th think that's probably not gonna be like a highly valued item on the server. Uh, so these other chests over here, oh, this one's got one bottle in it. <laughs> yeah, these other chests are from like witch drops and like very minimal other things that we can be collecting from the farm. Uh, let's kind of take a look in these filters. Oh, that doesn't, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, that's got feathers. Spider eyes, some sticks in this one, sugar, redstone dust, glass bottles, 
glowstone dust. Yeah, we do get witches spawning very rarely, but like I wanted to sort out the items if we ended up getting some. Uh, the amount of items that we have here that you've seen uh, was at like two and a half, almost three double chests full. Um, yeah, that's from about five hours of AFK time. Not super long to get that much stuff, if you ask me. I think this farm is working very, very well, even though it's not like put all the way down at Y0 in the most efficient farm possible. It definitely works with me AFK in my little AFK glass box way up above. Yeah, so we came back here to the mob farm because we need string so we can make candles. And I also needed to grab some honeycomb and some honey blocks to restock the shop. So we have those ready to go. String, like I said, is something that we were lacking previously. So let's grab that. I'm going to grab a bunch from in here. And we're just going to fill up a shulker full of string. I think I only needed like nine stacks more or something like that. That should be about right. Yeah, there we go. And I can just throw the rest of them back in here like a so. Yeah, so with string, string plus a honeycomb equals one candle. <laughs> so yeah, these stack, I think, to 64. So we have a bunch of different barrels to fill up with candles. I'm not sure how much we're going to sell them for if we're going to do a diamond per stack or maybe a diamond for half a stack. Not sure how much string would go for and i think i'm selling honeycombs for one diamond per stack so maybe yeah and plus we're going to be adding in dyes and all this kind of stuff so these are things that i gotta think about <laughs> um but yeah speaking about dyes we also need to get ourselves a dye farm set up if we're going to be selling different color candles that's definitely something that we need to do well i'm going to head back actually and restock the shop while i'm thinking about it and then we'll figure out what we're going to do as far as dyes going forward all right, guys, so I've been thinking about dye farms, what we need to do. There are some certain dyes that are easier to get than others, like black dye is difficult to get. We either need a wither rose farm or a squid farm. We'll probably be doing a squid farm in the future. Uh, we also are going to need green dye. Green dye comes from cactus. That's like basically the only way you can get green dye in the game. So we will have to set up a cactus farm <laughs> at some point. I don't know if we'll be able to do that today or not, then we have some other dyes that are easier. So like red dye, yellow dye, uh, pink dye and purple or magenta dye. Anyway, those are the colors that you get from these different flowers. These you can automate with bone meal and dispensers. So we'll probably be setting that up or we will be setting that up today. Uh, cocoa beans, you can also kind of automate the same way, although they don't it requires manual interaction. You have to place the cocoa bean and break the cocoa bean. But getting it to grow up, you can do that with bone meal using dispensers and redstone. So these are the two farms that I plan on setting up right now. Cactus farm is something that we'll probably be setting up in the future around this area. That way we can farm cactus while I'm up here AFK in our little glass box above our mob farm right there. So uh, you kind of get an idea where we are. We're nearby the mob farm. But yeah, our super smelter building's right there. There's our honeycombs. So this hill is where I plan on doing our next build. And that build, like I said, is going to be doing the cocoa bean farming and these four flowers. That'll take care of a good portion of the type of dyes that we need to automate. But yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to build a building that's going to be very similar in style to our super smelter building over here. It'll look similar, but it's not the same. It's built, uh, it's, it's going to be sized for the farm that's going inside of it. Anyway, let's get started.
All right, guys, so here we go. The The farm is set up. We have the ability to bone meal two tall flowers here. We can just flip this lever and it'll fire these dispensers here that are going to be shooting bone meal. Mm -hmm. uh, we can choose any of these flowers that we want. So you can see I've already done a little bit of rose bush and some peony here. Yeah, I uh, farm these so I could actually plant the flowers around the outside of this place. I didn't have a whole lot of these two tall flowers. Uh, but yeah, I can show you with the sunflowers how this works. So if we just flip this lever, boom, and just a few seconds later, check it out. All of these, we have 48 additional sunflowers. So this works real well for farming a whole lot of these different types of flowers for the dye. So we'll get yellow and red and pink and what's the other one? Magenta. Uh, we'll get those pretty quickly. So the same thing over here, we have a cocoa bean. I know this one isn't very fantastic, but we can uh, turn this lever on just the same. So we got two dispensers uh, firing bone meal. If I grab some cocoa beans, put that in my offhand, and then I hold. Okay. If I hold right click and then uh, press and hold left click, I can uh, punch the beans and then place a new one. And by the time it gets broken, yeah, it's fully grown from the bone meal here. So this is going to work real well for farming up the, the brown dye. Uh, yep. Yeah, so that's what this farm is like. Okay, we can turn this one off and then I'll just put these back in here. So, uh, there we go. Yeah, so there's some chests up above. These contain bone meal on both sides. That's feeding this hopper down here into those dispensers. And then we have large bone meal storage up here <laughs> that's being distributed through these hoppers down into both of these farms. Uh, this one has a bunch of hoppers behind feeding these dispensers with the bone meal. In fact, uh, this requires so much bone meal to fill it up. I took all of the bones that I had from our mob farm and from our older skeleton farm, uh, our skeleton spawner farm to fill all of this up. Yeah, it took a whole lot of bone meal, uh, but we have one central location to put in more when we need more, like if we're bone meal a lot of stuff. So this is really good. And then I started um, coming out here and kind of working with the terrain a little bit. I wanted this to be about the same Y level as our super smelter building over here. So we can eventually have a nice path that kind of leads between them. And then we'll have a path that kind of leads up towards our iron farm and our bee farm over there. And maybe, I don't know how we do like a path over to the geo since that's like a really far down thing. Maybe we'll make a staircase or something, but yeah, I'm kind of thinking about like the logistics of how this would be set up and like, you know, kind of like a situation where you have paths between buildings and you don't have to fly anywhere. So yeah, I had to uh, cut down the train quite a bit to make that happen here. I guess I could have left it up another block and had like a step up elevation change. But anyway, uh, this is what we went with and I think it looks pretty good. So it is very much similar to the same style that we used over here. It is slightly different, but yeah, a lot of the same themes exist. We got the, uh, the copper, the cut copper roof, the deep slate, uh, stairs and stuff, the border, the, the flowers, the leaves around. Yeah. A lot of it's the same. Gotta get rid of this beacon. And then this wall over here, this is like the most unfinished part of this. I didn't know if I was going to slope this down more or just do a retaining wall here and do something else with this in the future. So yeah, for right now, this is going to stay a little rough, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out now. Uh, we just got done making this farm and there's yet another farm that I want to make. Turns out I am essentially broke when it comes to having shulker boxes. Now I know Impulse has a shulker box shop. In fact, I bought like eight stacks. I think he's selling them 16 for a diamond block. I bought eight stacks of 16 <laughs> when I was digging out this. This is how we ended up getting all these shulker boxes of stone, like all of this stuff. Uh, a good portion of these were the ones that I had previously farmed and then, yeah, I have used all of my shulker boxes. Um, what I'd like to do eventually is have, instead of large chests here, I would like to have shulker box loading. So we just have a bunch of shulker boxes that get filled up and then when they're full, they get broken and then inserted into a large chest. That way we have a large amount of storage. Problem is we need a bunch of shulkers to do that and I don't have infinite diamonds to keep paying impulse. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to make our own shulker box farm. All right, guys. So I have figured out the location that I want to put my shulker farm and it's going to be here in the end. We don't have to bring it to the overworld. There's no reason to other than just having it in the overworld. Um, if I have it here in the end, 
we can load and unload it whenever we want to and we don't have to worry about it always being loaded nearby my base and like causing the rest of the server lag this is one of those things where i plan on afking for a while collecting a bunch of shulker shells and then you know leaving the area and not coming back for quite some time uh you'll notice that some of these end islands over here have torches on them yeah i'm using uh what is this mini hud the despawn sphere this renders a sphere of 120 blocks from like the center of this island is where i set this point right and i went around inside the sphere and i spammed torches trying to uh, get rid of all of the light levels you can see the numbers on these blocks if i remove this torch some of these turn red and then they have zeros on there that's where endermen can spawn so i just kind of turned on this light engine thing flew around looked for all the red things inside the sphere and then i spammed a torch now you'll see there are still some endermen i yeah i didn't hit every single block i got the vast majority but the, all it takes is one or two spawn spaces and boom you got a pack of endermen that are just hanging out <laughs> uh yeah i i wanted to light this up because we're here in the end and people come to the end for repairing their stuff and i didn't want to affect that while I'm building. So anyway, I just went around and spent a bunch of torches. Not a big deal. Um, so we can turn, uh, that is the wrong thing. We can turn that off and we can turn off the sphere. We don't need that anymore. Yeah. So this is the location that I plan on building our shulker farm. So this end city appears to have all the shulkers here. I saw there was still two at the entrance over there and, uh, nearby this location, um, about 600 blocks, 400 blocks like this way. Uh, there is, oh, I thought I had my rocket in my hand. <laughs> uh, there is a warpy thing. So yes, we have quick access to come to the farm and then we can just fly over here a little bit, hit the warpy thing, and then we are out of here, right? So yeah, that's very, very convenient that that there is one nearby. Um, yeah, so we have an end city nearby that has shulkers and we have a warpy thing nearby that we can get out of here when we are ready to go. So both of those are very high convenience. Uh, so yeah, this is where I'm going to be building it. I'm going to be building it about 40 blocks above us. And then we're going to have a uh, collection system down here. We will be far enough away from the farm where we shouldn't affect it at all. Um, but yeah, I think the next thing is we're just going to start building. Right, so the shulker farm is now complete and this thing is a beast. Let me tell you guys, this took a bit of time and a lot of resources to make. It uses a whole lot of scaffolding. I think it's something like, I, I want to say it's like 13 stacks of scaffolding or something. So if you're going to be building this, take that into account. Uh, let's get some credits where credits are due. This thing is crazy and I did not come up with this myself. This farm... Uh, I watched a video by MD, MD's build video. The farm is by ending credits, right? And then apparently Dark is the one who came up with the scaffolding, the original design, and they took inspiration for that. Anyway, credits will be, or uh, links and stuff will be in the description down below. So the farm's up there. You can see right here we have one powdered snow block. This is my stuff. We have a dropper that's going to be dropping the shulker shells into the powdered snow, which will make it fall straight down. And that's going to be landing on top of this hopper here. This is a one wide shulker loader. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is the shulker shells are going to come into here. And when this thing gets full, this piston crushes it. The honey block keeps it from popping around. It'll just end up down here in this chest down below. And if I had extra shulkers, uh, they would get dispensed automatically and replace this one. So the next one will get filled up. 
Unfortunately, I'm basically out of shulker boxes, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, like, try and collect some and, uh, fill this thing up as it's running. Uh, the thing is, though, like, we don't have any shulkers in the farm, and that is the next step. But let's come up here and take a look at this farm real quick. There's a lot of things happening here. The important thing, though, is we have this powered rail coming over. Uh, we have an activator rail here, which should eject any mob that's in it. And then any solid blocks that we have around it have buttons on it, so there's no place for the shulker to land on. So what's gonna happen is this thing's gonna eject, and I do believe the shulker's gonna end up right here on this slab that's got a rail on it. It can't land on the side of the slab or the bottom, and pretty much everything over here it can't warp to either. We have some redstone blocks, more buttons on the sides, and the bottom where it shouldn't be able to teleport. So really, it's gonna pick the scaffolding to teleport into. And once it lands on the scaffolding, it'll work its way up into this farm. And then I think eventually it'll come over here to where the minecarts are picking it up and then ejecting it. It'll land inside this glass area <laughs> uh, on top of that armor stand right in there. And eventually it'll warp down uh, right there where this piston is pushing up and down on that armor stand. There's a lot of things that happen in this farm. I'm not quite understanding how it all works. But I have tested this. Next thing is, though, we need to get a shulker here. So I need to load it up on a minecart and send it on its way over here. And hopefully it'll just work its way into the farm and then go up and then get collected by a minecart and then eventually warp back down here. That's what we want to see. Um, so, yeah, I do have some potions of invisibility and I've made this rail line mostly where we need to go. It doesn't go all the way there because I didn't want to aggro the shulkers until <laughs> I was ready to go here. But yeah, if we come around, you can see the uh, the rail kind of like stops right here. Around the corner is where the shulkers are. You can see them right there. Uh, so we need to use a potion of invisibility, finish this rail, and then see if we can pick one up in a minecart. I just realized I don't have any more blocks. All right, so first things first, we need to drink the potion of invisibility. And then I believe we have to remove our armor so we can't get spotted. If we have things in our hand, it won't matter. But if we have armor on, then the shulkers or the other mobs would see us, right? And we don't want that. Uh, so we want this to get next to this guy and hopefully pick him up. So let's do this. We'll bring this around like so. And let's bring this rail up a little bit. That's fine. We need to use a regular rail to go around the corner. And then we need some more of these powered rails, which I just realized I don't have any more uh, redstone. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, let's go around the corner here. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my wings. Nice, soft landing, please. All right, wings off. Uh-huh, this should all be fine. And we just need to put a lever right here. Okay, well, I got a minecart. Hopefully we will pick up the shulker. We did not. Okay, let's try this again. I'll try and stay a little bit further away. Block. Block. Rail. Maybe now it'll work. There we go. Okay, Shulker is in the minecart. I'm just going to go ahead and put on my armor right now before I forget. Okay, so what we want to see is this guy get ejected. Oh, he can shoot me on the minecart. I did not realize. We want to see this guy get ejected and then teleport onto that scaffolding. And then when he's on the scaffolding, I'd like to remove all these blocks so it can't go anywhere else. Oh, there we go. It's perfect. Okay, so it's in the farm. It's doing its thing. I would like to get rid of all of these extra blocks here. There it is. It's in there. Okay, so the shulker's there. Now, uh, we do have a snow golem down here. And I might need to turn that lever on. Or is it on right now? There's a snow golem that should be shooting at the shulker. If everything is set up correctly, I might have made a mistake. Okay, I heard the snow golem fire. Yeah, there we go. So we got bullets going up and down, although the shulker seems to have left. All right, guys, so literally about two minutes later, it looks like this farm is up and running just fine. You can see shulkers are dying. I guess they are entity cramming. Uh, we can't see the items dropping through from this far away. The items are too far away, but you can see the particle effects happen when it is shooting out shulker shells. So we have collected some so far. 
I just realized talking about this thing's probably better using my camera account here. Now we can see things without having to zoom in. <laughs> Yeah, so these shulkers right here are shooting these bullets down this hallway and they are going down here. There's just so many of them, right? And they're attacking uh, this guy right here, which will sometimes they'll die. Sometimes they'll split and we'll get more shulkers that work their way up to the top here and then get picked up by these mine carts. Yeah, so this thing is working flawlessly. Um, I did see in the time lapse though that I missed this block here at the very end. I replaced that, and there was also a block that I misplaced on the scaffolding somewhere, and I did grab that. So yeah, that's all taken care of. There are no extra blocks in this setup, and it also appears that I can have this loaded uh, just with my camera account. My main guy is in the uh, overworld at this point. So yeah, this is really, really nice. Uh, just to be able to have this farm, collect a whole bunch of shells, and just not have to worry about storage anymore. Alright, so one last thing about this farm, guys. I know, we've just spent like the last forever on it, <laughs> but I left my camera account here, AFK, for about 12 hours. Here we go, check it out. Shulker box of shulker box and shulker box is full of shulker shells. Our storage problem is fine, I probably don't ever have to AFK at this farm ever again, but... I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of these. I'm going to leave these other ones here for later. I don't know. Maybe we'll set up like crazy storage in the future at some point. Uh, and we'll need like thousands of shulker boxes. Probably not. But, you know, uh, I, I could also set up a competing shop, I suppose, and sell shells along, uh, or uh, I guess against impulse. <laughs> That's a possibility. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Anyway, uh, back to the overworld. All right, guys, so I just spent a bunch of time making candles. <laughs> All the ones that we can make, I have made. So uh, we have some red candles here, and we're going to be selling these for three diamonds per stack. And the reason why is because the amount of resources that goes into each candle is, you know, one string, one honeycomb, and then a die, right? So if you think about it, a stack of die, a stack of string, and a stack of honeycombs uh, goes into each stack of a red candle. Yeah, I think that's three diamonds. I think the value is there. Um, but yeah, we need to get a whole lot more honeycombs. I need to swap my farms over from making a uh, honey co or I'm sorry from making honey bottles exclusively. We need to swap those over to start making some honeycombs once again. Yes, now that we have dyes available and we're starting to sell candles this is a thing that absolutely needs to happen. Uh, so I went and I killed a whole bunch of squid here so we can get all the black dye. We got 28 squid. In fact, uh, we also got a trident. One trident drowned spawned while I was uh, killing the squid. And yeah, uh, it was got a one for one on the drop there, which was really nice. Okay, um, but yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and fill these up as much as possible here. I'm going to make an announcement to uh, let people know that we have candles in stock now. At least the limited colors. Um, yeah, once we get a cactus farm set up and a flower farm so we can get the blue and the green dyes, I think we'll be about there for all of the different colors. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.